In this production, it's imaginative and creative. There are stags and nymphs and a beast who comes through. Um, it's also done in a very, I would say, a Russian pettipaw style, where the story is told mainly in first act. And it's done mostly through dance with a little bit of mime. And then by second act, there's still a tail end of the story, but then you just get pure classical ballet. I mean, the costumes are amazing. The Beast has this huge cape at the beginning of the first act. I mean, it's beautiful. It's like so powerful. Like you can feel it. And I think it's perfect for kids and for adults. There is a lot of action going on. There is a lot of steps, a lot of dancing. So that's good for them. And then for the kids, they still have this story. We have masks for the beast, for the caryatids, for the rose bushes, for the simians, a lot of lovely head pieces. They have to act through all the fur. And what you think would be more to do to make it come through is actually less. So with the tilt of the head or whether the palm is facing up or facing down conveys a completely different message. There are some hard lifts. And they're the same lifts from 1958. You can't miss them. They're in the Grand Pas de Deux with Beauty and the Prince. Two, two lifts that I, haven't, that I hadn't done before, so that's what is surprising because it was done so long ago. I was like, wow, I had never seen this before and then had never done it. I, just, I love this ballet. I do. The music was not written for this ballet. Tchaikovsky only wrote three genuine ballet scores. And I think that one of the beautiful things about this ballet is that you don't even realize that the music was not written for Beauty and the Beast. It works together so seamlessly. I would love the audiences to have gone through a journey. They've traveled with Beauty and the Beast and they've gone on an emotional, magical journey with them. And they've done it all at the ballet.